It's Q and A day. We're live once again. Another vidIQ live stream. I'm Dan. Hello, Rob. Hey, hey. It's Rob as well. The gloves are coming out as usual, but these are just live streaming gloves, not fighting gloves. Take it away, Dan. All right. Well, every week we present to you a live stream, and usually we go through over some YouTube tips and tricks. We like to go over a lot of our own vidIQ tools. We spend about maybe the first twenty minutes or so doing that. And then we ask you the whole time to be writing down your questions because we do a Q&A right after. And that's the majority of this live stream. We spend probably about like 90 minutes answering your questions live from chat. So I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys have your, your notebooks or note documents on your other Google monitor. Keep. Yeah, Google Keep, your, your iPad or tablet of choice. And I hope you're viciously typing away various viciously. questions. Yes. V various questions that you uh... must get more subscribers. <laughs> yes. Aggressively, viciously, <laughs> angrily typing away. Uh, so save your questions for the Q&A. Um, I want to say hello to some folks. And then I'm going to self promote. Dan, can we ask people? Uh, yes. Tell us where you are from today. I want you to tell us where you are from in a chat as we do our shout outs. So like whether it's a country or a location, just tell us where you are as we do do the shout outs. No, nothing super specific, please. <laughs> yeah, not addresses, not zip codes or anything like that. You know, just Galveston, Texas might be an example. I don't know why that came into my head. Like, I'm not even in the US, but for some reason, <laughs> Galveston came into my mind. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we're kind of filling time until people actually tell us where they are. There we go, Dan. So let's do some shout outs. I'll start with you. Oh, all right. Me. Uh, let's see. We have Cold as Gaming from Ontario, Canada. We have Irilla from Denmark. We have Shirley's Beauty Discovery Channel from England. Uh, Av uh, Advaith from Bedroom. Uh, <laughs> well played. Well played. Okan from Turkey. We have Furious Emerald 5 from America. Robin Verity from Canada. We have Milan Gamer from the Czech Republic. We have Mask09 from Eastern Europe. And I'll do one more. We have Furious Emerald again, but they said Earth this time. So I'm confused. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of Canadians in the house today. Um, I blame you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry about sorry about that. Um, I'm from. <laughs> I, I, I'm not from Vancouver. I live in Vancouver, uh, so uh, that's why I, I always notice the Canadians. That even though I'm not Canadian myself. So we've got Detecting PA from Pennsylvania, Duckling Gaming from the Netherlands, 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 Netherlands. Um, is that like a the big brother of just the Netherlands? I'm not sure. You tell me. Uh, we've got Real Plays from Pakistan. Uh, we also have a Chess Geek from California. Still getting community posts from Chess Geek. Three weeks later, after voting on one of his um, polls, Fizzle Pop, A up, he's from Yorkshire. I'm originally from Huddersfield, A up. Um, we've also got Burak uh, Asley Turk from Washington. And last but not least, uh, we have, who is a person from, someone said Vegas, but then the chat went so fast that I couldn't keep up with it. Uh, so I'm just going to say that we have uh, the Bellagio is there in Vegas. I'm sorry. You, you, oh, there we are. There we are. Sorry. It's Joe's Phenomenal is is in Las Vegas. So welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining us wherever you, you are in the world today. Yes. So we do this live stream every week and uh, 
We do love coming here and answering your questions and showing off different tips and tricks for growing your channels. However, next week is going to be a little bit different and pretty awesome. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a good one. Uh, yeah, we are having none other than the Emily D. Baker on this live stream next Wednesday. So do mark your calendars. If you don't know who Emily Baker is, uh, she is a legal expert and she knows a lot about YouTube. So not only are we going to have you guys post questions to Emily, but we're probably going to have a bunch of our own. Uh, we interviewed her on our podcast called Tube Talk. And uh, we, <laughs> I don't know if we we still got enough out of that because there's just so much to to know about uh, you know legal questions. Yeah. It, prior to that um, tube talk, um, I asked the community for some questions, and I think we got about three hundred. And so we did have a quick fire round, but we only got through about fifteen. Uh, and as you say, Dan, I am very interested in asking questions to Emily about the new shorts permissions. Uh, which is causing a, a little bit of a stir. I think maybe there's a bit of an overreaction here. However, a precedence has been set, uh, and I want to know more about that just from a, not I guess, not necessarily a legal point of view, because I think YouTube is entitled to do what they're doing, but more from like a public relations, you know, the, the user license agreements, that type of thing. But anyway, that's all for next week. Um, so do join us, and also congratulations to Emily who hit 100,000 subscribers this week. Uh, I, from what I remember when I was um, doing a tweet, she had 6,000 subscribers last November. So in six months, she's gone from 5,000 to 100,000. So that proves that at any moment in your YouTube journey, your channel can just explode and you can um, enjoy phenomenal success and growth while serving your community. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't trying to cut you off there. It's the... Uh... I was trying to share the right screen. But yes, congratulations to Emily. Please do mark your calendars for that live stream and watch our community tab too because I also scheduled a post to go, I think, the day before that live stream. So if you had any questions ahead of time, we're going to do the same thing where we try and just take some of those from the community tab um, in the Q&A portion. All I'm right. Getting up my screen sharing as well. Done. All right, that's all oh, done. Cool. All done in the background. So... Today, we are talking about our favorite vidIQ tools and how they can help you grow your channels. And uh, be sure to have your uh, questions ready for the Q&A. We won't be answering questions until this part. Um, and please don't spam the chat. Our moderators will see you or show you the door and you may never be able to come back, which is a shame. So They may viciously put you in timeout for 60 seconds. <laughs> or forever. <laughs> If it were me moderating, it'd be forever. Oh, wow. I'm a very aggressive moderator. Wow. All right. In any case, uh, welcome to our uh, the back end of our channel here. And we're viciously guess... welcoming you to the back, back end of our channel. That's going to be a theme for this live stream now, I believe. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. It's throwing me so bad. You're, you're supposed to go first anyway, so should I let you share? Yeah, I, sh I guess I should share my screen at this point. Right. So... Um, we've covered quite a lot of tools over the last few weeks. As, uh, You've joined Dan and myself in, in this new, I guess, uh, webinar adventure on a Wednesday. Um, but the thing I always go back to in terms of my uh, favorite um, vidIQ tool is uh, something that's omnipresent. Like It's there on every single screen, and it's a reminder that you're not just watching YouTube videos. You are creating YouTube content as well. And it's on pretty much every YouTube screen. And I use this as a reference point. Like, I'm on YouTube for most of the day. And let's say I'm doing something in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I suddenly see these numbers start to shift. And I think, what is going on here? I didn't even have to go into my YouTube analytics to see that all of a sudden, the views per hour on my channel has gone through the roof. And it's all through this top statistic in this right-hand corner here which is the real-time stats bar. Uh, so what it basically does is grab some of your channel data and put it on all sorts of screens, such as the one that we can see here. And it gives you information such as views per hour, views over the last 48 hours, uh, shorts views. We've added that recently. If you are a shorts creator, specifically traffic from YouTube shorts, then views over the last seven days, minutes watched over the last seven days, and it's going to show you whether you're up or down in that sense. And also an accurate subscriber count because it's taking it directly uh, from your channel. 
Now, with each of these analytics, you can sort of mouse over and get a bit more of a breakdown there, as we can see. As usual, over the last 48 hours, you see that little peak there. That's when we live streamed. And so it's very accurate in telling you, you know, where, when new videos are coming out and how they perform. And each of these graphs sort of transfer themselves into this top bar, unless, of course, you turn them off. So if I didn't want anything there, it would just be the vidIQ tool button. But if I want views per hour, let's do subscribers. So you just want to know how your channel's doing right now and how many subscribers you have. And we introduced this tool, I think, about, oh, I think, when was it? 2017. And it remains my favorite tool just because it's always there and it's kind of like my comfort blanket, my, my safety net. And the best news is, uh, like many tools at vidIQ, it is 100% free. Uh, so if you download the Chrome or Firefox extension, authenticate your channel, you'll get this tool absolutely free. So that, Dan, my personal all-time favorite tool right now here at vidIQ is the real-time stats bar. I love the real-time stats bar uh, because it saves you some clicks, too. If you've been wondering, I wonder how many views per hour my channel's gotten, uh, especially if you've been on a roll lately. It's great because you're already on YouTube. You just look up. Ah, ah, nice. Okay, another thousand for me. And then you go back to watching videos. It's fantastic. Um, it's, it's like a, a resting heartbeat of a channel. Like I know that, generally speaking, vidIQ averages between two to three and a half thousand views per hour when we haven't launched a video. So I, I instantly know that if it's below that or it's above that, if it's below that, YouTube's analytics are usually broken, which happens like once a month for real-time stats. But if it's suddenly over like 4,000, 5,000, and we're not live streaming or something, I'm going to jump into the deeper analytics to see which video is suddenly taking off. And then maybe I can double down on it or, or act on it in some way. Yes. So that is the real-time stats bar. Um, what we're going to do is jump over to me now after, sorry, I just I hit a button on StreamYard and it's kind of throwing me a little bit. Give me one second here. Okay, there we go. Uh, I have my tool up here next. I'm gonna, I have three that I've picked. I'm going to start with the competitors tool because the competitors tool is awesome. I do want to clarify, once again, you did just say this, but we usually do a, a better job at the beginning of letting everybody know. Everything you're seeing here on the sidebar and things like that cannot be seen unless, of course, you download vidIQ for Chrome or Firefox. It is free. And if you look in the description, you can take advantage of 30 days of our whole suite of tools for free. Just use the link down below in the description. If you haven't uh, redeemed that offer already, uh, be sure to go check that out. And uh, yeah, we're going to look at the competitors tool. Now, we did a whole presentation on this, so I'm not going to dive too deep. But if you want to you know, check that out, be sure to go uh, into... I forgot what we called it now, but it's pretty. I think it's pretty uh, obvious in terms of the title and thumbnail. It's about the competitors tool. These are people that we've added ourselves as our competitors that are channels we like to keep an eye on. And personally, for me, this is a fantastic way to see what's trending in my space and seeing what everyone's kind of talking about uh, just right now, today. And it can be sorted in all kinds of fun ways. So we could see the past 48 hours. We have Think Media here releasing some videos like how to talk to the camera, zero to 100 dozen that. subscribers. I, I want to watch that one about talking in front of the camera. I still need help with that. Yeah, it's yeah. That's a good one to anytime the topic comes up. I like to sit sit down. There's a few topics like that. Uh, so a lot of growth tips, things like that. You know what's interesting is this is the second time today I'm seeing a zero to 100k subscriber video, mm. and uh, I don't know if it was just on the homepage for me. Yeah. I don't remember who it was, but that's kind of interesting. You know, a little more research, and now now this might be a video idea already. We can broaden this out to things going on this week and uh, this month, so on and so forth. Uh, YouTube Shorts expansion has been pretty big news, and that was from YouTube creators themselves. Now, focusing on this week for a minute, the other tabs here are really nice because we can see what they're sorted by. So right now it's views per hour. That's what's judging what video shows up first right here. So I think Media released a video 13 hours ago. It has 435, 36 views per hour. So that's why it's sitting up here. People right now, uh, since 13 hours ago, are very interested in the concept of zero to 100K subscribers. So again, pretty strong indicator there. We can also just search for views in general, not views per hour. And we have a bunch of our own videos popping up here. Nice. Like you won't see, see sorry? I like to see that. 
Yes. You won't see your own videos here unless you put yourself as a competitor, right? Or is it Correct. just there automatically? Correct. No, yeah, you can remove us if, if you need to. Yes. Um, so we we have ourselves in here, and this gives us a good idea of how we're ranking for certain things right now, which is awesome. So just the total amount of views is how this is sorted. And then, of course, the date uploaded. And this could be good if you see, let's say, three of your competitors upload videos. You know, they don't have a lot of views yet, but they were all about the same to topic. Maybe you play a game on your gaming channel and there was an update and you weren't paying too close attention so you came to the competitors tool tool and saw a whole bunch of your competitors are talking about it right now and the videos just haven't taken off yet maybe it's not too late for you to also jump in there with with your take on that so that is just a very brief overview of the competitors tool if you want to add channels you would go grab their channel id you'd pop it in here and click add and once you add competitors to here this actually unlocks information in other tools that we have. But again, I'd encourage you to go check out that other live stream so you can see all about it. All right. Over to you. All right, then. So it's back to me for tool number three. That's right. We're, we're on a third tool. Yes, we are. Uh, so this isn't necessarily one tool specifically, but it's the concept of um, keyword research, understanding the... The, the language of your topic and how you might start to use that language in your own content. So I'm going to do a search here for how to uh, get, let's say, 100 subscribers. This is something that we might be interested in uh, making a video on. I think we've already done some in the past. So, yeah, that's brilliant. And, well, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that if we did a search. Um, I don't see a search. On. Oh, hang on. It's because it's showing the wrong one. <laughs> Where's that? Where's it gone? Oh, it's this one. Right. There we go. Sorry, I've got exactly the same screen up twice. So that's um that's why I did that. Anyway, so yeah, here we are. How to get 100 subscribers. I I'm telling you now, I did not do this in advance. I didn't know it was going to show all of our results at the top of the search, which is pretty cool. It's nice to see that we're dominating this as a search term. Um, but it's the things down the right hand side here which are going to give you more information, such as the numbers, how you know the highest views that have come from a search term here, the average subscribers, uh, how many times there's a the this keyword phrase is using a title, the top creator, which just happens to be us, whichever creator that is, you'd want to investigate them a little bit more and understand why they are dominant in this particular keyword. Also, the keyword score again, this can be a barometer, uh, the higher the better. The reason we continue to make videos around getting more subscribers is because we have quite an authority in this space. So we can, in this sense, ignore the keyword score a little bit. But if we were a new channel looking in this area and we're a smaller channel, this number would be more significant and help us break into this area. But just look at all of this information down the right hand side in terms of keyword language, helping you understand the best creators, helping you understand related keywords. And it's try just trying to encourage you to think about how you should shape your video for YouTube. If you're going to make a video about how to get 100 subscribers, what are the keywords? Like how to get your first 100 subscribers, how to get 100 subscribers fast, all of those extra little uh, modifying keywords and phrases that just might bump up your video a little bit more. With inline keywords, we can then expose all of the video tags. Now, I don't want you to necessarily think of these as video tags anymore. These are just more keywords that you should be aware of, again, to add to your own dictionary, your own keyword universe uh, for when you use the similar language in your content. And I can click on any one of these, launch as a keyword inspector, and then again, you've got tons more information all surrounding this keyword. So I think when you're venturing into a new topic for the first time, it's probably worth spending at least 30 minutes to an hour just typing in searches into YouTube, letting vidIQ um, do the, the connecting. You realize this search term is also connected to these keyword phrases. And you, you can click all of these, copy them, maybe the, put them into Google Keep or whatever you want to use. <laughs> and then you have a, I, I keep going back to this word, but this, almost like a thought cloud or a, a keyword universe of all of these things that you may be wanting to use in your own content. So it's not necessarily one specific vidIQ tool because we have many uh, for this, including uh, taking all of this stuff and putting them into tag recommendations. 
but yeah, just thinking about keyword research and how vidIQ helps you from the moment you put a search into YouTube. So that is tool number three from me there, Dan. That was your second tool, right? You said number three. But... Tool number three in total. We've okay. done three in total. Way to, way to make it even more confusing. Let me see. <laughs> so, this, so this is tool number four, Dan, but your second tool. Got it. Okay. Well, the next tool... I, I didn't I didn't write mine down can any particular tell we order. Rehearse, can you tell we rehearse before before we go live? <laughs> I didn't put mine in any particular order, but this is probably my all time favorite. When I think vidIQ, I think channel audit, and I'm sure a lot of you do as well if you join us on our Tuesday streams. But when we can't audit your channels, you can use our tool to audit it for you. Uh, this is going to show you a nice big bird's eye view of everything going on on your channel right now. Uh, and it's great for for me. I love checking this and finding out maybe an old video that I did is suddenly doing really well, and I didn't anticipate that, you know. And then I can take a look and say, "Hey, like, I mean, the suggestion here is content to double down on." And now this video out of nowhere that did poorly when I uploaded it is now suddenly having, uh, you know, its day to shine. So maybe it's time to double down on that. Great example here is how to start a gaming channel in 2021. 156 views per hour. That's pretty nice. I got to say, Rob, that's uh, still, whoever made that. Still. Yeah. Four months later, Dan. Four months later. Yes. I, I made one of these in my first year here. And uh, jumping into 2021, it was time for an update. And I'm sure next year, it'll be time for another update again. So you should have yeah. you should have heard what Savage was saying about you yesterday. Oh, no, that was, yeah, it was when you, um, you dropped out um, because of your <laughs> internet issues. Uh, he was talking about this in particular and how you've been dining out on that one video for for a, a, a good while now. <laughs> point pro yeah. point proven. I guess I deserve that. So in any case, uh, it also shows you uh, videos, again, under content double down on the engagement rate. So if you're getting engagement better than you would normally, you kind of look at these and go, well, why is that? You know, what what happened in these videos that caused such good engagement? Uh, views in general, and of course, you can set this time frame to the last 30, 60, or 90 days, or you can. Uh, I forget, always forget what this does. Can you explain this again? Limit so, video time frame. So yeah, so if you click it, that that will that will make your gaming video disappear because this is just limiting the videos that have been published in the last 30 days. Right. So it doesn't okay. count evergreen content. That's a feature I can't use because then I can't see my gaming video. So that's why I always forget <laughs> about it. <laughs> Videos about your, you know, that, that have brought you in the most subscribers. And then, of course, like I said earlier, the competitors tool, how it fills out more information across all of our tools. Here we mm -hmm. go again, showing us the views per hour of our competitors right now. So if you haven't checked that in a while. You might look at these and go, oh, I should probably investigate the competitors. It shows you some other stuff too. Down here is really awesome. The top search terms for your channel, uh, the, the click rates on things like your end screens. So how often do people click on the channel card and the video card, the playlist you've put on there, all kinds of different uh, end screen click rates and then cards as well. So videos get the most clicks. Maybe instead of playlists, we put more videos in our uh, cards when they pop up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Who knows? And then, of course, content that could use work based on all kinds of things, the lowest average watch time and, and all sorts of things. We don't like looking at this because it makes us sad. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we got some more average metrics down here. Again, I don't want to go too deep because we did a whole stream on this tool as well. Anything you want to add before we move yeah, on? Yeah, just one thing, Dan. If you scroll down a little bit, just so the second roll, go back up, go back up. I keep going a little bit more, a little bit more. Stop. So top suggested videos on the right-hand side. This is where you're getting traffic from other people's content. And what's really telling here is specifically what videos are being recommended, what videos people are watching, which therefore means our videos are recommended. YouTube shorts and gaming videos. And, you know, we don't always make content on these two topics, but we know that on occasion we're going to return to these foundation topics because a lot of people watch our videos for these two topics. So that can have a really big impact and influence um, what you're making on your channel, especially in terms of discovery. I mean, that there is a microcosm of how the discovery engine works. Like YouTube is connecting your content 
to these creators and you're getting views from it. So that's a really interesting one to pay attention to. Definitely. So on to you. All right. So this is my tool number three, uh, tool number five in total. And I've decided to go into business for myself here, Dan. I've decided I'm going to look at another tool instead of the one that we chose beforehand. Well, let's just check. Is this the right screen? Right. It is the right screen. So um, we're back in the YouTube studio. And I don't know if you can see this a video at the top here. I've discovered that whenever I um, upload a video to YouTube, but I don't publish it. Our wonderful community goes out, goes off and find these videos because once they're in a playlist, even though they're unlisted, you can find them. And so people start commenting on it and saying, I'm early or before this was published or whatever. And they think they're really funny. So now this is their little Easter egg that I give them a thumbnail telling them that they found a video on vidIQ that's unlisted. However, this video is going live tomorrow, so I need to change this thumbnail. So first of all, I'm going to do that. So just bear with me uh, while I pick the uh, appropriate thumbnail for this video. And you'll realize why I'm doing this in a second. Right. So I'll save that. So that's hopefully saved it there. But I just want to make sure that it's completely saved. So I'm going to refresh this page. And now it's going to allow me to... Um, show you this next tool, which is the thumbnail preview tool. So remember at this point, this video hasn't been published. It's still unlisted. And I think this is a fairly striking thumbnail. Uh, it's, you know, it's me looking, giving my shocking YouTube uh, ex expression, uh, average view duration of 187%. And when you see this video, you'll realize that this is weirdly possible. People can get this amazing amount of uh, view duration, audience retention. But I want to know how this is potentially going to fare against competition. So I'm just going to do a search here for YouTube, YouTube watch time. We'll keep it nice and simple. So if somebody was to search on, on YouTube for YouTube watch time, this is what they would get. They would get, again, ironically enough, uh, one of our videos at the top of the list. And then they would get this video from Justin Brown and another couple of ones. So it's look, watch time kind of associates itself with 4,000 hours, which is interesting. That might tell me that this video, I might need to tweak the title a little bit because watch time is associating itself with 4,000 hours. Because this second result is how your video may look at the top of the search rankings. Now, again, I think the thumbnail itself is quite striking and I think it's effective against the competition. but the way that YouTube is categorizing YouTube watch time in terms of search has me a little bit concerned here. So yeah, I may go back to the drawing board with a title later on, but that I've just been informed of that by using this tool. And I could actually change the title directly here if I wanted to, and that would save it back to my video. And so, yeah, what do you think about that, Dan? I didn't realize if I just put in a search for YouTube watch time, uh, it would come up with 4,000 hours of watch time. Maybe I need to narrow down the search a little bit how to get more watch time uh yeah because i've seen the video so I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to change the title based on that just because of, i don't want to spoil anything but like just because of exactly what you're talking about in the video and what four thousand hours means for creators if you catch my drift yeah i think this is better isn't it? how to get more watch time so that feels like a more accurate one you see i'm trying to avoid uh, specifically using uh, audience retention and average view duration because people search for that a lot less. So I'm trying to link it back to watch time, which is a lot more of a, is a lot more common search term. So yeah, I'm not as concerned now. Maybe just YouTube watch time was a little too broad for my search. But this is uh, helping me. This is informing me of you know how it's going to look on a desktop, how it's going to look on a mobile phone, tablet, how it's going to look on the browse page, uh, on desktop. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly encouraged. Yeah, let's turn off the competitors. So put it against completely random videos. <laughs> one of ours <laughs> is, is one of those random videos, which is pretty cute. So yeah, this is in totality, the thumbnail preview tool. And for a video that's not even been published, I've already been given quite a lot of interesting and useful uh, tidbits, which I may act on after this live stream. So that was tool number five, Dan. The final All right. tool for myself. All right. Last one for me then. Now, this is one that uh, I'm sure if you you've if you follow us on Twitter at VidIQ, uh, I'm sure you've seen 
some of these before, but I'm going to go over our achievements tool. This is uh, this is where it's at. So this tool is going to help you keep track of all of your successes, not just your subscriber goals, but views, likes, comments, your, the number of uploads, whatever it is that you want to keep track of. The achievements tool has you covered automatically generating certificates for you at every milestone. So our next one is coming up here, 900,000 subscribers. And it tells us about when we might think to get that. In this case, it could be as early as next month, 900,000 subscribers. So we'll I'll see. That. I'll tell yeah. That. About we'll middle of... cost for a million by the end of the year. Yeah. So now you get the uh, prediction down here. You get the achievement you're currently on. So currently the last one we got was 850,000. And that's how all of these go. But when you click into them, it opens up a page that went away and you guys can't see it showing a certificate. <laughs> okay. Give me a second. I'll try and figure this out. This is a way, this is a unique way in which um, StreamYards doesn't let you um, share your screen unless it sh you share the entire screen so you can see all of the tabs and stuff, which obviously we, we don't want to do. We just want to show what's on the the physical browser screen rather than the, the window itself. But as Dan said, once you click on something, it takes you off of that screen. Uh, so that can be quite frustrating. Yes. Uh, in any case, I'm going to hide this. Um, here we go. So we have a whole certificate. Now, these you may have seen on social media. You can grab yours right now if you've installed vidIQ, authenticated your channel, everything like that. And you can go ahead and check out all the different achievements. And what we're going to ask you to do right now, actually, is share this with us. So the way you would do that, one or two ways, you could just click right here into Twitter and you could share it from there. Or uh, if you want to do it a little more manually, you can right click it and just go ahead and save it as an image and send it to us that way. Take your favorite achievement and tweet at vidIQ right now with the hashtag, specifically use this hashtag, vidIQ milestones with an S at the end. Are you pulling it up? Nice. Yeah, there we go. And we're going to show everybody some of the uh, things you've achieved here in recent days, weeks, months. Yeah, what so you, you can see see how people have been sharing their milestones uh, last week when we were doing some shout outs. So hashtag vidIQ milestones, share your recent achievements and we'll shout them out in around about 30 minutes, I would say. And so as you can see now, it's showing all of this stuff at the bottom. It's showing my tabs. It's showing what time it is on my computer. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hide that now and stop sharing. There we go. So not much more I wanted to say uh, because, again, we did a whole other live stream on this one as well. Um, but if you were to scroll down, you get some other stats here too. Your top performing months. Uh, so you achieved 47.3 thousand subscribers on May of 2020. So it was a pretty big month. Um, 3.7 million views December 2019. Pretty big month. So you get a lot of different things. And this one, I always felt this one's a little bit silly, uh, but basically the video holding the most views in your channel of all time. <laughs> um, <laughs> we won't go into that uh, for us, He's but done. Uh, done. but it's a good statistic to have if you're interested in that sort of thing. So uh, there you go. Uh, you have a tool that's built into vidIQ that tells you when you might get. That's honestly, the certificates aren't even what excite me. It's what's coming next that always gets me really excited and really motivated. So there you go. We should also say as well, congratulations to another creator who's very close to our hearts, and that is Travis, mm -hmm. uh, who hit 100,000 subscribers this morning. And uh, yeah, we've been sharing that very certificate for him on social media uh, in the last couple of hours. So congratulations to you, Travis. Uh, I would say in terms of uh, your alter ego, um, yeah, he's, he's not getting there anytime soon, unfortunately. It's <laughs> just riding his coattails. Yeah. All right. I've set up. So it's all ready to go to share some uh, achievements later on. All right. Well, that means it's time for Q&A. Da -da -da -da. So if you have a question, uh, again, you should have been furiously scratching at notepads while we were chatting. So you could think of all the different questions you want to ask for this section of the live stream. We ask that you start your question with hashtag question. It helps if it's all caps at the beginning of your message. And we ask that because a lot of people are talking amongst themselves right now. And we want to be able to pick out questions that are being directed to us rather than if you guys are just having side conversations and things like that. Um, so as questions uh, come in here, let's see. We'll, we'll go very, very quiet for a while and start to look 
at well, uh, some of the questions. You can start looking for some questions. I will add three things at this point. I have added to the live stream uh, slow chat, and I've said it's 90 seconds. That's not because we don't love you conversing in the chat. It's so that it helps us find questions because it can go very, very quickly when everybody's just able to uh, speak as quickly as they want to. Uh, there was two more things that I was going to add to this and they have escaped my mind. So I can't remember what they were. Oh, they were. Uh, thank you. You are well-trained as usual. We've got 175 people watching and we have 200 likes. YouTube inception has been achieved once again. Having said that, what I would like you to do this week is if you think there are fellow creators who would find this type of Q&A useful over the next ooh, hour and a half, then please do share it on socials so that we can all get involved in the conversation. Yes. So got some questions coming in. Road Rush Nation, are premieres worth doing or just set up time, set up a time for your video to go live? So for anyone who doesn't know, there's there's a difference between scheduling a video and scheduling it as a premiere. When you schedule it as a premiere, it basically tells everybody that you have a video, it's coming soon, but you can't watch it yet you know, because it has not premiered. And when it premieres, it opens up a live chat during the first minutes that the video is live. So you can be there as the creator kind of interacting with your audience uh, while the video is playing for everybody in real time. It's it's a cool little feature, but it's also, I, I think, in my opinion, one you would use for a special event. You wouldn't want to use this for every single upload, uh, mostly because especially if you schedule this really far out, people that come to your channel who see this video, it's like, I know the video's there, it's ready to watch, and it's something of value that I want to see, and yet, I can't watch it, just because the silly premiere thing hasn't happened yet. Uh, a, a example I always point to of a channel that uses premieres really well is Jelly's Marble Runs, because these are like real-time sports events. They don't live stream these because they're heavily edited videos, but they premiere them because it's like a race with these marbles, right? And someone's going to win and someone else is going to spoil that in the comments. So it's better if you can be there in the moment with everybody and watch it at the same time. It becomes a nice, big, fun event. And not all their videos do that. You know, any video that would be an in-between kind of thing would be just a normal upload. So that's one example of how you could use it. I must confess, I have very little experience of um, playing around with premieres after the initial perception that they seem to be treated like live streams, which meant that it kind of damaged the video on demand afterwards. I'm not sure if that's the case anymore because I simply haven't tested it. I would echo what Dan said about it being for special events or as you described there, Dan, a kind of like a pre-taped but live event. You know, it's best experienced as a collective. Another reason might be is because you want to be in the chat when the video goes live, so you can you can talk amongst um, creators. So that might be another reason. But I think for smaller channels, as you say, Dan, you, you don't want to be creating any barriers to your content. And when people perhaps aren't familiar with your content, you know, they see it in the browse feed, but it's a premiere. They don't know who you are right now yet anyway. We're just going to move on to the next thing. Perhaps when you build up an audience and you can start to build anticipation with certain videos, then yeah, it maybe is worth um, using premieres. But I've never seen any need to do it ourselves at vidIQ because um, I'm always of the opinion of, I when I'm on YouTube, I'm in the moment and I, wa I want to watch what's there now. I very rarely set reminders for things, but that's just my personal viewing ex habits on, on YouTube. Rob, how do you get your... Uh the hair on your head so silky it's funny you should ask i uh <laughs> i did make a, a ball a bold get it bold uh decision to uh, shave my head last night uh and i did a really bad job of it and my fiance <laughs> noticed when we were getting into bed uh so she had to fix that before we could go to sleep um, so we, yeah uh oh also really good lighting i have two lights on me right now uh so that, go that's ahead all, yeah if you want to take screenshots meet me up I don't mind. Bald is beautiful. I will look like this in 20 years time uh, and I will be just as good looking, everybody. One day I will be bald like you. Um, but Bobby, yeah, this is all lighting. This is not. <laughs> I didn't realize it was Bobby, actually. Hey, Bobby, how you doing? <laughs> Bobby's been how, in here. How are you doing in your uh, soundproof bunker? <laughs> uh, 
Oh, was I going to say, I, I haven't had a haircut in many, many months. Uh, th thanks to the pandemic, I don't go out and get them. My wife helps me cut my hair and I have uh, neither of us at any time. So it's she's it's doing getting, a fine job. Looks she good. she Looks did good. when it, you know, a while back. Now it's, I've just let it go. <laughs> and it's been it's been a lot of product just to keep it standing up the way I like. So thanks for that. I, I needed I needed to be reminded of that. Uh, Meow Muna, uh, you've asked some questions before. Hello, uh, I'm on a bit of a break due to burnout. My last video was published five days ago. We're taking a break for more than a week. Hurt my channel. Thanks, guys. Well, let's just go back to the origin of the question. If you're burnt out and you need a break, then your mental health is far more important than a a, a couple of numbers on, on a YouTube channel mm -hmm. uh, right now. So do take that break and don't feel guilty for doing that. To answer the question itself, I'm not going to lie and say that not publishing doesn't harm your channel, which YouTube seems to suggest sometimes that that is the truth. I think if you have a regular cadence and you're suddenly not posting content for a while, then, yeah, I think your audience may start to look for alternative options, especially if your content is trending. But there are, I know there are other creators such as Mark Rober who publishes on a very infrequent schedule, um, but when he publishes, everybody really looks forward to his content because the anticipa anticipation has been built up. But yeah, don't worry about taking a break. If you need to take a break, take it. YouTube's not going anywhere. You can, you may be just going, starting in second gear when you were in third gear and it just takes a little bit of time to build up attraction. And I think this may be a learning experience for you to better manage your, your content and your time and your energy on resource, which I'm sure Dan will, uh, you always like to allude to this about um, the dangers of burnout. Oh yeah, it it's so important to to put yourself ahead of the channel, and I think that there's a lot of fear about taking breaks. Uh, but we we live in a time on YouTube where you can upload once a month if that's all you can really handle, is all you have time for in your life, and as long as you're consistent, that you know that can work. So if you're looking to get back into YouTube after a break, I would recommend trying to figure out and remember why you took that break in the first place. And if it, it, if it was that you were putting yourself through your paces and you were just creating the schedule that was untenable, it's time to, you know, rethink that schedule going, you, you're already going back into it. You've already lost some viewers because you haven't been around for a while. So you might as well start treat that as a clean slate in a way and just pick a new schedule that, that works for you. If it is in fact scheduling, usually it is. Usually that's what burns you out. It's just going too much, too hard, too fast. So I'll read this one out, Dan, and then you can maybe start with an answer. Um, Anna Sasbo, hope I pronounced your surname correctly. What advice can you give if I'm 1,000 hours away from YPP? And I think you say you've made 367 videos, published daily since uh, the 1st of uh, January, but struggling to get into YPP. So... Uh, we don't know if it's a short channel, which could always affect the amount of hours uh, because you're not getting those, those views at present don't go towards your total hours, assuming it's not shorts you're worried about. Uh, this might be a matter of, I guess, with, oh, it's so hard without looking at the channel. This might be a matter of not enough people are seeing your content, so it's time to kind of take a look at your niche and figure out what you could be doing to kind of captivate people a little bit. Are there any trends you can jump on? Anything like that. Uh, when you upload daily like that, the, the going back to burnout a little bit, you take away time where you could be kind of doing that research and, and trying to figure out what videos you could be making that are going to get discovered. Uh, so in theory, you could be getting closer to that thousand hours with less content because in between every video you're doing your research, maybe you're spending more time on thumbnails, uh, you know, optimizing your videos, looking, let's say you, you uploaded some videos and you look at your retention graphs and they're in like 20 or 30%. Well, you want to study those a little bit and figure out how you can get your retention up. That's going to help your watch time. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, wh what do you think? So from 367 videos, uh, you've uh, I should have a, a lot of data and there should be patterns in that data whether it's a certain thumbnail style that you're using or a certain titling topic keyword structure I just have a video in in, in the background here just because I wanted to have a look at what what the channel was about and it's about these things Dan 
faith, food, fitness, finance, um, felicity, and fortitude. So there's a lot of different things uh, that you're covering there. This channel uh, brought to you by the letter F. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, interestingly, uh, this is a such a weird coincidence. Uh, the channel is, I think, a survive and thrive after a narcissistic abuse. And wait, I, the reason I yeah, so <laughs> it's not the same channel we audited yesterday, Dan. That that's okay. the thing. Um, we audited <laughs> the channel which has a hundred and fifty thousand subscribers and millions of views. And their channel is based completely on that. I think they're a certified trauma uh, counselor, but and their content is focused purely on uh, how to deal with narcissistic people uh, and abusive relationships. So they really niche down onto that one topic. And I feel as if Anna, you're probably going to need to do the same thing a little bit um, because your last four or five videos are the following: your YouTuber burnout explained your a water fasting weight loss, your YouTube income, five areas of life to heal after narcissistic abuse, uh, and then uh, coping with PTSD. So uh, there's already quite a few topics that you're jumping in between there, which is going to result in some very spiky audiences. Uh, so channel focus, I think, is probably the, the key thing. I'm trying to remember who that channel was. Her first name was Anna, but I can't remember what the... Dan, Let's bring up the next question, Dan, and I'll just try and remember what that channel was called. I just want to thank there. Forbidden Hex for the super sticker. Appreciate you. Uh, I had not picked a question because I, I wanted to make sure I thanked them real quick. Uh, I saw a question earlier, but it's gone now. It was about the data that IQ collects when you go to authenticate your channel. We do have this uh, answer very well laid out on our FAQ, but if you're worried about um, you know, the warnings that YouTube gives you when you give access to vidIQ, we explain all of that and why it asks you that and it presents you with that warning over on our website, vidIQ.com. Check out our FAQ. Um, sorry, I lost that question, but let's see here. So, okay, I'll take a gaming question. I haven't, I haven't answered a gaming question yet. So Game Slayer, I wanted to know if I can post Let's Plays and grow. If I can, how should I approach it? So a few things here. Uh, my, if you... If you were to go and watch my how to start a gaming channel videos, either one of them, um, I believe I, I probably have this advice in some form of, in both. But if you watch the latest one from 2021, I talk specifically about this where if you're going to do a Let's Play, you want to be focused a little bit on search as well as the content itself. So for anyone who doesn't know, a Let's Play is where the creator is sitting there and just kind of playing a game with their audience, right? And it's really easy to make that and say Minecraft episode one. Uh, I found a dog, you know, and the titles of these in our experience aren't very searchable. So you want to combat that by making let's plays that have a little more search behind them. You don't want to be super long either. So if, if the Minecraft is the game, for example, you would want to make some kind of tutorial in that video, you do something, right? So what do you do in that video that someone else could find helpful? And that could be a way to kind of get folks in the door. Um, if that's the approach you don't want to go with, maybe you just want to make these and you don't want to think too hard. You just want to have some fun. I would splice in videos in your schedule that are of high value as you're starting to grow. And that way, maybe some of those folks who watch the high value videos will watch some of your more casual let's play videos. Uh, so that's my general advice on that. But of course, depending on what kind of games you're playing, things could get a little bit, you know, slow growing because Minecraft I used as an example, it's an easy example because everybody has a Minecraft Let's Play, it seems. So it's a tough, tough place to be in terms of competition. You just want to keep that in mind. All right. I found the channels I was looking for. So just to give you the context, this is a question from uh, the, the channel who asked a question, Anna uh, Sasbo. Uh, and so this is their channel. And then the channel we audited last week, uh, yesterday, was uh, Angie Atkinson. Who, as you can see, NAS, uh, is a channel about narcissistic abuse recovery support. Uh, so, Anna, you probably are already aware of this channel, I, I would guess, given it's the same, same topic space. But if you're not, then this is the perfect channel to do research on to understand why they are so successful at what they do. And I think it's because they really focus down on, you know, quite a serious topic. But this proves, again, that there's, a, there's an audience for um, every topic of conversation on YouTube and a particularly large one 
uh, about this um this thing that clearly impacts a, a lot of people so uh hopefully that helps with uh, with your channel All and right, thank you for the super sticker yeah thank you for the super sticker as well sorry dan i wasn't looking at any questions then so uh <laughs> that's I'm okay gonna, i'm gonna go back and see what we can find all right okay we can quickly do this one uh tana animations what is mentions next to channel comments and how do we use this tab i haven't got this yet but i know other people oh, have i have um oh do you want to share it oh you can't really dan can you mm, um, no <laughs> no uh, <Okay>. so <laughs> on, the, on the youtube studio now where it says comments it may say comments and mentions this is not actually a new thing uh in terms of offering it to creators because in the youtube studio app or is it in the youtube mobile app this has always been around where you can see comments and mentions basically what mentions is is alerting you to when somebody's use your channel with the at channel name so for example at vidIQ, you can actually do that on youtube and so let's say another channel is, tab is a good place to yeah they're, yeah they're celebrating a certificate and they say thanks to at vidIQ for the certificate and that would then alert us through the mentions. So I think this is mostly going to be available to channels of above a thousand subscribers because I think you can only do mentions once you have over a thousand subscribers. Um, how do you use it? I guess the only way you really use it is if when you notice you have a mention, uh, you go to that channel, that video, that description, and maybe just give them a thank you, you know, start a conversation or a dialogue. Um, and that's where maybe. Uh, a future YouTube relationship of some kind can can build and you can both uh, succeed from it, flourish from it, you know, share content, make videos together, that type of thing. Indeed. All right. So I'm just looking for the next question here. Uh, all right. So I got, I got a couple back to back that I think we could talk on for a bit. I'll start with this one. Let's do it. Is it okay to do live streams and, then neglect the regular and short videos or try to balance them. I wouldn't use the word neglect. So I, I one, I wouldn't look at it like that. I mean, you're you're making the content you would like to make in the moment, I would I would assume. If you can find a balance there, yeah, I would say that's better. You're you're kind of opening the doors for traffic in all sorts of different ways, right? So you have your shorts, which you know typically bring in a lot of different people who've never seen your channel before it hasn't been great for getting you know returning subscribers but that's not the case for every channel so you have that uh your long form content just regular videos are great for you know search for example if you're if you're going for growth or if you have a let's play or whatever it is so yeah that's a different traffic source and then of course live streams in the moment are published in different spots on youtube as well yeah try and balance if you can but I don't know. There's no, it's, it's not, there's nothing wrong with doing just one. There's channels that are strictly live streams. For example, there's nothing wrong with mixing it up. Again, this really comes down to you, your goals and what you have the capacity for in terms of your, like your day-to-day -day life. I think um, in the past, I would have said that uh, live streams are a way of supporting your community within a YouTube channel, but it feels as if that is changing quite rapidly because, forgive me if I'm wrong here, Dan, a lot of Twitch streamers are now starting to transition to YouTube just because there's a better offering for, the, for them on, on YouTube. Um, this may not necessarily fit your channel, uh, as I don't know if it is, strictly speaking, a gaming channel. But ultimately, the only way you're going to find that out any of this is to, to test, to, have, to, to work out what's going to work for your channel and what isn't. Um, I still sometimes wonder whether we should experiment with not doing any live streams on the main channel for a month, uh, because it may be impacting the reach. Be I guess, cause what might happen is that people watch our videos on a Monday, but then there's two live streams and they're not really interested in either of those live streams because they're two hours long and they just want to watch short YouTube growth videos. So we're, we kind of set us as every week we set our audience up for a, a 10 minute video and then we give them two big live streams and then we give them shorter videos at the end of the week. It's like, Hmm, I don't know. Is that alien in our audience a little bit? Because when we look at the Spanish channel, which doesn't have any live streams, it seems to be more of a pure 
audience watching every single day. But at the same time, we're not here necessarily for just views and subscribers. There's a community out here who finds this stuff really valuable, and you're our most loyal viewers, and we want to reward you with with this type of service. Um, so, you know, that's internal questions that we're asking ourselves, and you're going to do the same. If you find that live streams work most, then, hey, just do live streams on your channel and experiment once in a while with other stuff. Uh, I think there is no right or wrong answer here, uh, which obviously isn't a good answer for you. Uh, but that's usually the case with YouTube. It, it really depends on the channel, the viewer, the creator, and the audience. I, I mix live streams into my strategy right now because it... They're honestly, for me, they're kind of a break because usually I'm I'm thinking pretty hard about that next video, right? And then I got to yeah, make it. Yeah. And scripted content like that takes longer to make, it feels like anyway, than sitting down and doing a two-hour live stream. And yeah. they're a lot more casual and, and you know, you get to interact with the audience in a different way. So if, if those are something you want to fit into your schedule, you get, yeah, test it, like Rob said, pros and cons, you know. Um, yeah, that, that video I, I made, um, it's going out tomorrow, I think probably took about 10 hours just with con conversing with Jake Fellman, then filming the video itself, making it, it is much high quality, much higher quality for this done. We pretty much do this in about two and a half hours, don't we? You know, yeah. a, a bit of prep beforehand and then the live stream <laughs> itself. And then it's done. It's complete. We're, we're, we're moving on to the next thing. Yeah, there's some time for a thumbnail. There's some time for some strategy, but for the most oh, part. Oh, yeah, I forgot you yeah. need to do. So I just turn up. I forgot about that. You've got to yeah. make the thumbnail in there. Yeah, the, there's the a little bit more, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do it right. for that myself. I, I, if I can just take a break at least once a week on the channel for thumbnails, I'll take it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Frosty says, I just started using thumbnails in my gaming videos, but when I post thumbnails, I haven't been getting any extra views or stuff and tips to upgrade my thumbnail. So basically what you're asking are for tips to upgrade your thumbnail. And the reason I wanted to bring this up was it was a great time to talk about the vidIQ Discord because while we could pull up your channel and maybe give you some tips, uh, you can get a lot more real-time advice from our Discord. So if you go to vidIQ.com slash Discord, you can join our server. You'll have to agree to the rules and everything like that. Be sure to read them. Uh, and then if you agree to them, you'll be welcomed into the server. And then when you have like a thumbnail for your next video, for example, you can throw it into the thumbnails room and say, you know, guys, the video is about this. Here's the thumbnail. What do you think? You're going to get some honest feedback, um, you know, and, and a lot of people, if you look in that channel, you can actually see people who posted the thumbnail. And if you keep scrolling, they'll come back and say, how's this? And usually it looks a lot better. Thanks to all the feedback they got. Uh, so that alone can be a really great resource for you. Of course, we showed you a little bit earlier in the stream, the thumbnail preview tool, which you can use the vidIQ. That'll show you your video and what it would look like ranked amongst the people who are at the top of that niche. And uh, that's going to give you some good indicators of ways you can prove your thumbnail as well. We're not doing channel hornets here or channel channel hornets, channel <laughs> audits today. But channel if, this, if this is what you mean on your channel, I mean, it may be another channel where you've just started making custom thumbnails. You're at the very beginning of your YouTube journey um, in terms of thumbnail creation. And so if we were to give you some very quick tips, I would say that right now, if these, let's say the top row are custom thumbnails, I wouldn't actually be able to tell their custom thumbnails because they, a, a thumbnail has to try and tell a story of some kind uh, in that image. And they these don't. Now, But again, I could be wrong. These could just still be, to me, they still look like still images from the videos themselves. And so as Dan said, uh, use Discord as a, a good reference here at vidIQ and just start doing research, like how to make good thumbnails, do a search on YouTube. You'll get tons of tons of good answers uh, to, to get you started with this. And just be patient. Um, people get to a certain level with video quality and then all of a sudden they realize that they have to up their thumbnail game and they have to take like 10 steps back to start perfecting that. Uh, and that can be a bit of a readjustment period as well. Question. I love the podcast. <laughs> That's a statement, but thanks. Yes. I, I wanted to to go ahead and grab that anyway so I can show everybody uh, what the heck this person's talking about because we do, in fact, have a podcast. Why isn't my screen there? Hold on. Oh, I didn't have it ready. I thought I did. Apologies. 
Here we go. So we have a YouTube podcast. We go over all kinds of different bits of YouTube advice every single week. Uh, a lot of times we have a special guest on and we talk about um, them and their journey and, and they bring a lot of expertise to the show. So uh, the last one we did was how to grow on YouTube using social media with Ben Levitt. You, if you've been watching streams recently, he was on a recent channel audit stream as well. And tomorrow's podcast is going to be all about how you can upgrade your YouTube channel and specifically your lighting, camera, things like that on a budget and beyond. So be sure to check that out. It'll it'll drop really early tomorrow morning uh, so you can get Tube Talk wherever it is you get podcasts. So be sure to is check that, that with, out. Um, ben is that with Ben and Is Yes. Is it that one? Oh, so they got onto the um, live stream before the Tube Talk in the end. So oh, yeah. They were, production sometimes good. works. Yes. Because we interviewed them like two or three weeks ago. Whoa, Inception, Inception, Sorry. Inception. <laughs> Echo, echo, echo. <laughs> All right. All right. Can you find um, one more question? Well, I, I guess I should be doing this. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Now I'm looking. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I was going to click. <laughs> Galaxy. You got blessed by the YouTube gods. Oh. Uh, and one of my videos got put in people's recommended. What do I do now? Well, we kind of hinted this from the channel audit tool in that it was showing you what videos you were getting views from. Uh, so I will be looking into the traffic sources of this particular video to see where that traffic came from. And hopefully there's a lot of suggestive videos that are coming in from that. And so you'll be able to realize, you'll be able to understand what the connection was, whether it's in the content itself, the titling, even potentially the thumbnail. And ultimately, with that video that was that's popped, you want to be, I'm going to use the word double down, but like a simpler way of putting this, or a more layman's way of putting this, is make more of that content because it really resonated with your audience and YouTube was able to serve it to the right audience. And so they want more of that right now, and you should be acting as efficiently as possible to serve that audience up with more content. I know that can be really difficult to do uh, that, because sometimes you want to jump onto the next thing that you're creatively interested in making, but ultimately you're on, your platform is to serve your audience and you've got the clear message that your audience wants to watch more of this. Sorry, Dan, if I've just completely stolen the answer no. there, if you want to add more. I just want to, and I don't know, Galaxy said something funny. I was blessed by the YouTube gods, but I, I just want to squash a little bit that, that, uh, think the way of thinking of like, oh, I, I, you know, YouTube finally noticed me, you know, and, and I, I was blessed by the YouTube gods. Uh, yeah, there, there can be some luck involved, especially as it pertains to jumping on a trend and things like that. But, you know, it, when, when a video gets, hits on recommended, and you don't quite understand why you may have stumbled upon a trend <laughs> without even realizing it. You know what I mean? So it's, it wasn't, it wasn't because, you know, YouTube was just kind of like waiting for you to upload your 10th video. Okay, fine. We'll recommend this one. Uh, there was, there was pieces that fell into place for this to happen. And that's why, you know, Rob's saying, look at the data, you know, you, you want to see if you can continue making videos like that. So you can continue getting into the recommended feed because that is something that can continue to happen for you. It's it's not luck. And and you probably don't believe it is. I'm just clearing that up for anyone out there who might. All right, then. Uh, well, let's share the milestones. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in all of you folks, actually, because we only have two done. What? Only two people have submitted their certificates. I remember when we did this a couple of weeks ago, and like everybody was sub submitting their milestones. So we're going to spend a bit of time here uh, and congratulate these people. One of those being uh, Squishy Man, who hit 2,000 subscribers. So congratulations to you. You've now doubled your subscriber base from when you reach the monetization requirement for subscribers. Hopefully, since March, maybe you've added a few more subscri uh, subscribers. And you're actually called Squishy Main, not Squishy Man. So I do apologize <laughs> for mispronouncing man. you uh, <laughs> to begin with, Squishy Main. But there we are, 2,000 subscribers. Dan, I want to give you at least a minute to congratulate this person um, because we want to celebrate these people who've actually shared their certificates. Yes, Tech Echo. You've been doing this for one month. You have four videos, and you've gotten 100 views. You're actually at 131. So between four videos, 
you've managed to get 131 views. I got to say that is a lot more than I think a lot of people got on their first four yeah. videos on the platform. That. So that is a really cool achievement. Congratulations. And uh, with four videos and that many views, just like we were explaining to the, the last person asked a question, you have some data there. You can kind of look and see what people enjoyed about those videos, what they didn't. You could look at their attention, maybe the comments, maybe there's some ideas in there. So congratulations and uh, keep uploading. Hopefully you've made more than four videos. Um, well, April 25th wasn't that long ago, but hopefully you continue to upload on a consistent basis. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you at 200 views. Tech Echo, welcome to the YouTube journey. Mm -hmm. If anybody else wants to share their certificates, I'll have another look maybe we, in 20 minutes. You know what's so frustrating is during live streams, everyone's like, I want to shout out. And we finally <laughs> open the door. Like, not only do you get it's a like, shout when out. When they've got to do some work to get that shout out. No, you, no, I don't want to do that. you get to show off. You don't just get a shout out. You get to actually, like, show off. And they're like, nah, never mind. <laughs> uh, all right, fine. No more shout outs then. Just kidding. Uh, all right, what do we got? <laughs> Look at this. People, oh no, hang on. That's not the right question. Um, <laughs> did you not see the start of this live stream? This, this is kind of like an Easter egg for our, for our regular viewers. It, these are my live streaming gloves. Every Wednesday, put these on. You did pull up this question though, and it does it, it raises okay. a question for me. What do you mean? <laughs> Too many videos or not enough videos? I guess. Well, in my, is it going back to the question of quality versus quantity? Maybe. Are you, make, are you making are you making too many videos where um, when you should be making less videos and the quality should be higher? Uh, I think for your audience, there's never enough videos. People just want to. People just think you're a robot and you you can push out as many videos as possible. I'm I'm sure most audiences would want to see a video every single day uh, as a cadence, but it's just not possible. Um, but you know, it depends on your audience. I'll go back to what I've been preaching very recently, and because MKBHD said pretty much the same thing. Uh, I'm allowed to back this up now with the idea of um, early quantity leads to future quality and that if somebody asks you to make one video in a month or one video every day for a month, I would choose the uh, latter just because I think you can learn so much more in the creation process of making 30 different videos, which then is going to lead you to more quickly identify your mistakes and improve on them as well as getting some youtube data even though it might not be the best data if you're just cranking out videos to a certain extent um but yeah that would be a my general answer to a bit of a vague question so what video game do you think small channels could grow a lot with Minecraft. now no <laughs> that's not Minecraft what i was gonna say modes. You you could make Minecraft Hi, videos. <laughs> Bed walls. I'm just saying all of these words I've heard during live streams and channel audits, which I think are to do with Minecraft. Okay, so play Minecraft. That's the <laughs> one dot one six. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. If you play Minecraft. I think I think there's an opportunity to grow because not only are new channels coming around every single day to, that start Minecraft channels, uh, but there's new players to the game every single day. Minecraft and you, Minecraft YouTubers are just doing this over and over again. I would say, though, if you're trying to find a game that's going to help you grow a little bit faster, you're going to be better off finding one that is... So if Minecraft is like the A-listers of video games, you need to find something that's at the B-listers, okay? Something that's still a household name, but not completely dominating on every facet of every content platform. TikTok, Twitch, YouTube, everywhere you name it. Minecraft is just everywhere. So the other part of this advice is... You don't just want to pick a game because you think it's going to grow your channel. You want to actually know what that game is. You want to be interested in the game and you want to see how much value you can bring when you play that game. So don't just say, oh, well, the guy on the TV said that if I played, um, I can't think of any game but Minecraft, Call of Duty, that I was going to grow a lot faster because it's not as popular as Minecraft, but it's still popular. So I'll play that even though I hate Call of Duty. Like, Don't get yourself into that, that mindset. Look at the games that you love. 
take like the top five and then start researching each one to see how it's doing today. And if you if you love Minecraft and then four other games that are like a hundred years old, maybe then you have a problem. But <laughs> hopefully you can pick a game in your library that you actually really enjoy and you can give a lot of great advice and value towards. But but Dan on the YouTube's told me to play Call of Duty. <laughs> why 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 is my channel not growing? <laughs> What's going on? I even tell my audience how much I hate this game. And then they stop watching. <laughs> hey, folks, welcome to my channel. I'm going to play Call of Duty here. I detest the game. I can't stand shooters. I much prefer playing The Sims, you know, like a real life um, type of simulators. But now, Dan on the YouTubes over at VidIQ, he told me to play this game. Uh, it's going to get lots of views and subscribers from it. Here we go. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Thanks for watching. Well, thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, I'm making myself laugh. Oh, man. Sorry, my, uh, my Nick, by the way. We weren't taking, uh, the, we, we weren't sort of taking the mic out of the question. It was just the idea of, um, as Dan said, uh, picking a, a game based on whether it would grow a channel as opposed to picking something you're passionate about and making content on it. Cody Heinz says, what about C-lister games to have an audience then jump to another game? So this is a strategy that I, it's kind of funny that you say C-lister games. When you say that, it's my mind it instantly goes to indie games, right? And this is a strategy that I myself got, uh, I shouldn't even say strategy. This is a, a, a rat race that I got caught up in when I was on YouTube and I was just really passionate about making content, but I loved so many games. Some indie games don't have this longevity right you could be i like i had a game that was just kicking butts on my channel it was awesome and i just i was able to double down over and over again and every video got more and more views and i'm like yes i finally found this awesome game i'm going to stick to this as long as i can but even i knew at the time like this game has a shelf life and i think it's kind of small it was still very new there weren't a lot of updates for it at least that quickly so update content wasn't really on the table and i had shown everybody all i wanted to show them after about 20 or so videos so you have to move on what happens all those folks who were watching that game and were excited about it leave you behind and around and around you go eventually if you do that enough maybe you get to 100k subscribers but your your view counts day in and day out are still relatively low because you've recycled your audience over and over and over again so it's why we say to try and niche down as best as you can. I've just had an idea for stream yards, Dan. I think there should be a, a feature which allows you to stack questions, you know, so you can oh. right click and say stack it up. And then yeah. because we can only bring up one question at a time. So if anyone from stream yards is listening, because I wanted to stack up this question, but I didn't want to remove the previous question while you were talking, but like I knew it was going to disappear. If I didn't question queue. Screen. Yeah. 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 Question queue. Uh, so uh, da Darren's general info, he's one of the people, by the way, who always finds my own list of videos and posts on them. Uh, so hello to you, Darren. Thank you for finding all of my videos. Uh, if a video is performing well with only a few tags, but I want to add more tags, will it affect the performance of my video? <laughs> so I think there's like two schools of thought here in that I think it's been prov proven more and more that tags have a little impact on the success of a video. So... There doesn't really seem to be any point in adding the extra tags. But at the same time, if it doesn't really impact the performance of a video, then there's no harm in adding these tags. So I will go back to the general advice of if a video is performing well for your channel, then there doesn't really feel as if there's any reason to adjust it in any way. I mean, could it perform better? Yes, possibly. But... Do you really want to upset the well-established signals of that video uh, for for any reason? So I generally wouldn't. Uh, Dan, would you have any different opinions on that? Because of of where we're at with tags in this day and age, I I would be moving on to the next video. I wouldn't really. Yeah, be me. I agree. I agree. Yeah, that's that's my thought. But if it if it means that much to you, I don't think it would hurt. Um. But yeah, I, I think if you were to change the title, if in an effort to like resuscitate a video, that would matter more than the tags. If you were trying to get the video to like, you know, get get a little more juice behind it. So 
I mean, we've almost spent too too much time thinking and talking about it right now in the minute that we have done, mm -hmm. in the sense of how important tags are. Uh, now, just to flip this question a little bit, if a video wasn't performing well and you felt as if you could re-energize it, the tags would be the last thing you would change. You would be wanting to look at the title and the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. But again, if a video is performing well, those are probably the last things you want to change because the video <laughs> is performing really well. Yes. I have a couple questions here. Like, there's there's a lot of good ones right now that I want to yeah. sink my teeth into. Um, so we have this one. Now, this one's very specific, but I think we could talk broadly on it. How do I make a good hook on a Minecraft video? For example, I make a base at a sea monument. So let's talk about the hook in general, right? So if if you've made a video and something cool happens, like it sounds like you found a monument, so you made your base there, I would take like the funniest moment from that and then make that the like, intro. But maybe you. So let's say you're at your base, right? You found this monument and a monster sees you and starts to come at you, right? Maybe don't show the end result of that, but you could tease it. It could be like, oh my gosh, we set up our base and oh no, a guardian. And like the laser beam starts to come towards your eyes and the video cuts. Hey guys, today we're going to go find a sea monument, make a base. So try and hook people that way. If, if you have a really cool moment, because a lot of times when you look at your retention graph, you know how it does this some people may never even see that cool moment anyway. So maybe the first few seconds of your video is the best chance to have that awesome moment. And it also is a cool hook. Now people want to stick around and see what what led to that and what's going to happen next. You know, So that's, that's one way to handle hooks. What you don't want to do is what I've seen so many channels do, especially in gaming, is sit on the menu screen when you're about to load the game and talk about all the things you would love to do in this video get straight to the action every single time you can introduce yourself in the first two minutes later on, you know, by the way, I'm Bob and this is my Minecraft channel. So feel free to subscribe. We're going to, we do all kinds of cool stuff. Keep your, keep those short anyway, but don't spend so much time on the things you would like to do. Just get straight into the action as much as you can. I think dream Mr. Beast gaming, Tommy in it are all sort of good examples of how, how they jump straight into their, uh, Minecraft videos, so um, maybe check them out. Not that I'm saying that you'll immediately be able to emulate them, but I think they usually have the viewer hooked within the first 10 seconds, if not quicker, and just, you know, really scrutinize what they're doing in those first 10 seconds. And if it means that it takes an hour to do those first 10 seconds of, of the intro, then, you know, maybe at least test it. That's something I'm certainly trying to do with my intros. I'm, I'm front-loading uh, vidIQ's content quite a bit at the moment, trying to get our audience retention from 60% to 65, 70%. And I'm still not really having any luck, but I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> uh, all right. Another question I saw was just got a copyright claim on something that was supposed to be royalty free. Let me know what I should know what I should do. Ooh. Yeah. So mm. you'll be so, 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 so careful. I'm not accusing you of anything here, but uh, there are a lot of channels out there that claim hey, you can just download this with the link below. It's royalty free. Yeah. And that's all you get in terms of proof that it's royalty free. And this tends to happen where it was never royalty free to begin with. And now you got to re remove the video, re-edit it, put it back with ro actual royalty free music. I would recommend using the YouTube music library where everything in there is royalty free. Should um, be, should yeah, be, yep. should be. And then there's also services you can sign up for. I believe if you go to vidiq.com slash rewards too, we, we even have some deals for some of these services um, mm -hmm. where you can get songs. It costs a monthly fee, but you can actually have access to even more music that you can put in your YouTube videos. That is totally cool to use. And you don't have to worry about like people lying to you about those songs being royalty free. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky uh, aspect of YouTube to navigate. Uh, so that's why if you're if you don't have any um, money to invest in these services, just play it safe and use the YouTube audio library um, because everything on there should already be properly content ID matched to YouTube so that you don't get any claims on them. Uh, and yeah, just good luck to you, uh, at Loto. Um, if you want to know what you can do with a video that's already on there, you can mute the 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 royalty free. You can YouTube will allow you to mute it, replace it with some other music, or even I think trim the entire section. I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. I know none of those are ideal solutions, but if you really want to keep that video up on YouTube, 
then that's what you can do. And I, we've done some tutorials on that. So, and just on that topic, uh, can I buy music of an artist that's licensed like Justin Bieber and more? It, it, technically you could, but that would be outrageously expensive. There is a, a service that provides this type of thing, but I don't know if it includes Justin Bieber's music. Uh, it's called Licked, but it doesn't have any of the vowels in it. So I think it's something like LCKD, um, where you can buy the license for very popular music. But off the top of my head, I don't know what the prices are, and I don't know what music is available uh, from them. And now, having said that, uh, for YouTube Shorts, this landscape is cha changing rapidly because YouTube have yep. signed lots of agreements with publishing uh, houses and music labels for you to use 15-second clips so that they can compete with TikTok in that area. But for long-form content, maybe that's going to be an option in the future. Um, wait and see. Having said all of that, just remember that when you're starting to use copyright uh, content of any sort, there's a very small chance that you're going to be able to monetize it in any effective way. And maybe some revenue sharing, but usually it's going to be a copyright claim, which means you can't monetize any aspects of it. So we'll always encourage 100% original content when you can. Here's one for you. <laughs> What if you are experienced? You are experienced making videos. Does quantity still make a difference against a bit of quality? You've been going around telling everybody to upload as many videos oh, right. as possible, and now you've confused everybody. So, <laughs> hmm, I think that there's always an argument that if it's this eighty twenty rule, in that you can get to 80% of your skills and qualities uh, on anything that you do, I think relatively quickly, but then to get the, the eke out the last 20% of quality or perfectionism or whatever it is, takes so much more time. Now, having said that, I think for some creators, that's very important because they are known and renowned for their high level of skills and quality. I always go back to MKBHD as an example, who creates super high quality tech videos. But let's say vidIQ isn't necessarily renowned for its high quality uh, cinematic YouTube growth education content. So if I was making a video about watch time and I decided to spend an entire day shooting on set and then it creates 30 seconds of footage, how valuable is that going to be to my content? And I'm not sure it is. I think people want to know how to get more subscribers rather than me doing something really fancy and funny. Now, also as having said that, I do want to have a bit of creative license to do stuff that's going to stimulate me, but I know I only want to devote maybe 15 minutes to half an hour on, on that uh, in, in certain areas. God, this is going down a bit of a rabbit hole here. Uh, now, having said that, if the content is very time sensitive, then I think it does go back to the efficiency, getting that content out as quickly as possible and then maybe doing follow-up content. Uh, so <laughs> there are lots of arguments for that. And as I say, I think I'm just going to the beginning of somebody's YouTube journey when I think there should be a certain focus on, on quantity a little bit more. And that's not to say that it should just churn out trash. I think it's a case of trying to focus on all of the different aspects of the YouTube content creation. And if you're only making one video, then you only get one chance to do planning, scripting, presenting in front of camera, thumbnail um, creation, um, shot alignment, editing, and all of the other things. Uh, I, I think there's just experience is so much more valuable at the beginning of your journey. But it's a good question, Dragon, Dragononic X, and you've kind of floundered me a bit with a really long answer. Dan, um, what, what do you think? Or are, you, are you agreeing with Dragonic X? I I know I really um, I really like what what you say about when you start, like get stuff out there. You know, don't don't sweat it so much. Get stuff out there. You know, I would think that as you do that, 20, 30, 40 videos in, that quality is going to start coming up naturally. You know, and yeah, and as yeah. as you collect data too, you're going to see a number of different statistics that point you in different directions. So maybe you've been uploading daily because you haven't been putting too much into the editing, but you learn a little bit more about your editor and you're like, you know, I would really like to 
add a little bit to these videos to polish them up a bit. But if I do that, it's going to be really hard to continue this daily schedule. So maybe you switch to every other day or three times a week or whatever um, based on all the different data. You can't collect that data, though, if you never upload. And I think if just when you start going for a strategy of just throwing a bunch of stuff out there, you're going to learn so much. And then over time, naturally, that quality kind of builds. Uh, I just want to, this is an interesting topic. So I just want to just touch on this. Is my screen? There it is. So let me just give you an example of my mind, how my mindset changes a little bit uh, when I'm making videos. This one at the top here about how to hack the YouTube watch time algorithm. It's not really about how to hack an algorithm, but you've got to include that in the title so that people notice it and click on it, blah, blah, blah. Is it clickbait? It might be. Well, you'll decide that when you um, like like or dislike it. I think it has 100% likes right now. So yeah, uh, not clickbait. Anyway, where was I talk <laughs> Where was it on this? 15 people I, said it wasn't clickbait. This spent, um, I spent quite a bit of time on this video because I needed to talk to Jake Fellman uh, and get some information from him. And then I really need to go deep into the details of what he was talking about. And it's essentially, so this is a bit of a, a teaser here. It's about how you can increase watch time on your YouTube shorts by creating loops. Uh, and so that did, did require sort of working with Jake to, to use some of his video content and then explaining how that works, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I did that over a couple of days. However, this one further down about YouTube permissions, this, I, I discovered this, I think last Thursday, and I thought, wow, this is a huge piece of news for the YouTube community. And I wasn't even aware of this. And I think YouTube creators need to know about this now, like not next week, not in like, I'm not scheduling this to go out next Thursday or at the beginning of a week. I want this video done to go out tomorrow because I think it's really important. So in terms of the quality I think this permissions one, because I, I almost rushed it. And I even said in the pinned comments, I'm sorry if I've missed anything or I've got this story a little bit wrong, but I just felt that I wanted to raise awareness on this topic right now. So I think the quality of that one was probably maybe a, a six out of 10, but the value of that content to the audience right then and there, I think was a nine or 10. This one here, I think the quality is a little bit higher. It's probably a seven or eight. And that means that the, the quality also adds to the value of it. But that's why I haven't released a video yet. I finished it on Monday. It's going to get published on Thursday because I'm not in a rush about it. So that's just a, a bit of a deeper insight into maybe the, the the push and pull of quality versus quantity or speed and efficiency and, and quality. Because, yeah, I guess it gets to a point where you're kind of not really thinking about quantity and quality. You're thinking about... Um, the style of a video, like, is it going to be highly produced, highly polished, or is it going to be um, rough uh, and scrappy, but the value is still the same for the audience that you're trying to target? Wow, I'm really getting into the weeds with some of these questions, but it was a good one, Dragon X. You, you, you challenged me, that, but I think I've suitably... Oh, that's just our live stream there. Uh, let's close that. Uh, there we go. Right. Oof. All right. How do I get my long form content to do as well as my shorts? The long form videos often have better SEO scores, thumbnails, et cetera, but they get a hundred times less views. So the, the ever confounding conundrum of uploading. I ain't got a clue. I ain't got a clue. Dan, you, you know the answer to this. I don't know the answer. Uh, if you upload shorts, there's another section of YouTube that they can thrive on called the shorts shelf. It's a new bit of real estate on the platform new as in like late last year and it's it's still learning you know about the types of videos that are going to captivate an audience and who they should get pushed out to so things are always changing um right now though a lot of channels are finding some success there right so they get a video up in the first 24 hours it doesn't do a whole lot maybe and then a couple hours after that it just blows up it gets thousands of views you know more views than they ever experience getting their long form content out there and then nothing again and that's because YouTube gave it a chance on the short shelf, collected some data on it. Maybe it'll come back in some form or fashion. Maybe it won't. It's a different section of YouTube. So when you when you talk about getting your long form videos to do the same thing, it just physically can't because it's not the same place that they're being shared. Um, that hasn't changed. So we have hundreds of videos on this very subject of how how can I get my videos discovered? How can I grow? And I would start there. I would start by watching some of these videos and applying them to your channel because 
that much hasn't changed, you know, but if you're, if you want to talk about how to get the people from the short form content to come and watch your long form content, that's still kind of a mystery to us. I, on my secret channel have had some success doing that, but I personally don't know exactly what happened. The only thing I can cite, and I kind of touched on this earlier is the topic. I covered a topic that not a lot of people were covering in general, not just on YouTube shorts, but on YouTube, there just wasn't as much competition. I was used to playing in a field uh, it, with a lot of competition. And so I decided to pivot and start a new channel and try something else. And it worked. And people have come back from the short form videos to watch the long form videos. And I think it's literally just about the topic. So, but I don't know that. I'm still trying to figure that out too. Uh, but yeah, in short, the short shelf is a different section of YouTube. It is another piece of real estate. And you won't be able to say, well, I get 10,000 views in a short. Why can't I do that on the long form content? Because the long form algorithms have been long established and they're, and they're, you know, they're way more, I guess, leveled up if you think about it like, like that. It, it is a question that we were asking ourselves three or four months ago. And then creators, as they had success on short channels, start, start to ask. And I still haven't really found a good answer myself. It still feels to me like there's two separate platforms running on the same app. You know, there's YouTube and then there's YouTube Shorts. And they are connected because you can create content on the same channel. But they seem to operate in completely different ways. And hopefully I'll be able to give you some better answers on this. I, I when you ask YouTube this type of thing, the kind of the, the answer when you ask YouTube certain questions, their response tends to be, "We, we don't know what you mean." Like, <laughs> it will just work if you make if you make content on a consistent, regular basis, people will watch it. And it's like, yeah, but you're not making a shorts channel, and you're not seeing what's going on here. Like, can you explain this? But that I mean, it happens for all sorts of different situations on YouTube. Um, and we'll keep investigating. Hopefully we can have some more solid answers uh, for you on that. Um, I've been trying I mean, the, to... The way shorts are discovered is completely different to, to the way long-form content is discovered. And I think that's a, a challenge. I, I, I still feel as if there's very little discovery connection between short-form content and long-form content. But now I'm just into the realms of um, theory. Yeah. I've been trying to create a... YouTube gaming shorts video here for vidIQ for a bit now. I've been very busy, but also every time I revisit my script, I rewrite a bunch of it. You know, I've rewritten this video probably three times now because I just keep learning more and more and then I get more confused. It's, you know, <laughs> it's just the, that's the problem I'm having right now with it. I think if we were to tie up this question in a little bow is embrace what's working on your channel. You know, if shorts are doing well, then continue to make shorts 80% of the time, but then experiment with long form content 20% of the time. So at least you're, you're, you have some skin in the, in the game in terms of long form content. And hopefully uh, when shorts come out of beta, they'll have a clearer creator path in terms of building an audience and maybe monetizing it uh, at the end. Uh, Rubina's recipes. Can you guys please explain what RPM is, please? Okay, right. I made a video on this about 10, minute, uh, 10 months ago. Ten Let minutes. me just try and remember. Right, okay. So there used to be an analytic, well, there still is an analytic called CPM, uh, which is the essentially how much revenue you earn from AdSense per 1,000 views. But that's before YouTube takes their slice of that pie, which is 45%. So RPM is, I think, what you earn cost per thousand after YouTube takes their slice, plus the other ways you can earn income on YouTube through memberships, uh, super chats, and anything else I've missed. So that I think... Your RPM can be wildly different from CPM depending on if you have more income coming through that isn't from ad revenue. Now, vidIQ doesn't money, we don't monetize our channel. So I always have to go off memory. Dan, am I missing anything there? Because you do have monetized channels. Uh, I think I, I, I think the premise is right there. But we I do have, have a video about it if you want to. 
there's like a 10 minute explainer if you want to learn more about it. Uh, I think you covered it all right. I have to have it in front of me. Like I, I always look at YouTube's little tool tips and stuff. <laughs> I, I rely heavily on those because there's a lot to remember when it comes to this stuff. So uh, RPM is fairly new. And I understood it when it came out. Now I'm like, I'm struggling. So I think you answered it. And I also think with CPM, you have less direct control over that because that's based on uh, the willingness of advertisers to put adverts on your content, which generally speaking is within a particular topic or niche. I think that some channels have proven that if they use certain keywords and titles, they can appeal to certain advertisers. But it's a more a case of, a financial channel has a much higher CPM than a gaming channel. So RPM is something where you have more direct control over it because you are earning revenue from uh, super chats, super stickies, memberships. So you have a, like a greater influence over whether you can persuade your community to invest directly in your channel as opposed to an advertiser that's just looking for a demographic. Well, I think I explained that really well, actually. Can someone clip that and make that video? That really are, are, do we have clips yet? When is that feature coming yeah, to everybody? I, that. I think we've got it, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. As a challenge channel and getting a lot of views, but only with three videos, how would I know what to post next? Well, replicate those three videos. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Uh, keep You keep doing challenges. I mean... That's that's really all all we can say. You've only got three videos, so I it's a small sample size. So you want to be testing. Why is my focus not? Okay, hey, come come on back now, camera. Uh, you want to be testing things still because uh, you you just got started. Well, well, we might as well just bring up this channel because they, they, they literally have three videos. So, I mean, you haven't got enough data to go off on off of yet in terms of uh, scale. But everything you do is you smashing it out of the park. I like. I would suggest that almost every single other person on this live stream right now would love to get five thousand views on their first video that they made seven months ago, then twenty-one thousand views on a video they made two weeks ago, and then nearly fifty thousand views on a video they made last week. Just do more. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I would say right now. Yeah. It, there must be other challenges that you can, you know put on your channel if it's supposed to be a challenge channel um you don't want to run out of ideas three videos in. <laughs> look at what other creators are doing other big creators are doing in the channels challenge space mm -hmm. and just add your own spin and riff to it remember years ago the ice bucket challenge everyone's dumping buckets of ice in their head for als i mean there's i think the challenge space is still kind of like that i think there's pe there's just challenges people are trying and then other folks are like oh i want to try that you know it happens in gaming communities all the time where it's like can i beat minecraft with some like crazy set of circumstances against me so yeah um but do some research spend spend a day or so just doing that just researching come up with 10 video ideas all right now I'm out of questions. Okay, Dan, let's have a look see. All right, let, let, should we do um some some live testing here? Uh Remix Destroyer 45. What a channel name. When I search my exact YouTube channel name, my channel doesn't pop up. How will people come back to my channel if they if it won't pop up? Let's try this. Let's see what all happens, right. Dan. Let's, <laughs> all right. Let's uh so the channel is called Remix uh Dish Destroyer. Right? I Whoa. think I have. How did you do that echo effect on your voice? That was weird. I don't know. So is it? It's gone now. Right. You're uh, right there. What are you talking about? Is this your channel? Uh, we found it. <laughs> Problem solved. Congratulations. You now rank on YouTube. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> uh, I, I don't have an answer for you if the channel appears, Remix Destroyer 45. Um, the answer what I was going to give you is that sometimes channels get restricted uh, due to their content. Um, and so if a viewer is in restricted mode, then your channel may not appear. But we can see it, so I'm not sure what the problem is, unfortunately, unless we fixed it by searching for your channel, in which case you're welcome. I mean, if we put spaces in, does it not come up with anything? That might be an interesting little topic. All right, so... This is one of these things which Travis talks a lot about in that people, if your channel's memorable and it's e that makes it easy to find, 
but Remix Destroyer 45 is perhaps a little too um, long-winded. I think Remix Destroyer might be a good channel name, but 45, I don't know, maybe it loses a bit of context there. So you might want to think about your channel name in that sense. Yeah. Floppy some pink. Good, some, some good questions this week, actually. Nice, nice variety. I like uh, this I'll... channel's name and logo. Floppy Penguin. Yeah, everyone remembers Floppy Penguin. So I've been on YouTube for six years now, making mainly Call of Duty videos. I have taken many breaks that has essentially killed my channel. How can I revive my channel? Pfft, I can kind of relate to this, Rob, because like when I started that that other channel to test shorts, it was at a point where I'm like, I've had this channel for many years and I've it has ups and downs. It's fun, but I'm really ready to try something new. And there's this cool new shorts thing. Sorry, just to interrupt. Can you see what, what how I misspelled the... Uh, Floopy Penguin. <laughs> Floopy Penguin. I also a good name. I do apologize. I'm going to bring it up in the background. Let's, I'm going to have a look at the channel in the background. All right. Also a good name. I'm not encouraging you to start a new channel or anything like that, but I think the, the point of the story is try and find something that's going to be a big reset button for you because that's what it was for me. It ended up being a new channel and it's really like reinvigorated me, you know, a, as a content creator. I, I make content for work and I also make content for fun. So there's a lot of room for burnout for me if I'm not careful. And so I had to find a balance there and I found it by hitting the reset button. So that that's uh, now to revive your channel. The obvious answer is make more content, be consistent not just in your schedule, but in the content that you create, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the things we normally say, but you're at risk of taking even more many breaks in the future. If you don't, if you're not like super passionate about what it is you're doing. So if there's a reset button for you, I would find a way to push it. If, if that makes sense. I'm going to challenge a uh, floppy penguin here and say, I don't think your channel, I don't think your channel's dead. I think this is the case of a lack of consistency and you're not serving your audience the right content all of the time because we see these, we see very spiky views. Look here, one with 5,000 views, 2,000 views, 3,000 views, 20, 2,000 views, and then one with 80 views. What what went on there? Is it a completely different game or is you covering a completely different um, topic within the game? I'm seeing many examples of, view counts I would be very satisfied with the one here with especially 11,000 subscribers with 11,000 subscribers yeah so yeah. it feels as to me as if the channel's not dead or in any case I think this is just um channel strategy which isn't quite hitting the mark every time right now yeah you uploaded a video 23 minutes ago it's got 12 views that video in a week pay attention to it you know it's in a way it's kind of good that you're <laughs> You're thinking, oh my gosh, like my channel, what what happened? But if you go back in time just a, a week or two ago, these videos that maybe didn't have a lot of views back when you first published them, and I guess we could we could check with our tools if we want, gained traction. So, and you're making content that I would say is going to need to rank and search, and maybe it's just taking it, they're slow burns, you know? What we could say from a very broader perspective is, you've been on YouTube for quite a while here, as you can see, like, your most popular videos are from a year ago, five years ago, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot more competition now that uh, you do have to appreciate, especially yep. in Call of Duty. And if you are standing so still and you still think you're, it's like I'm making the same content I made a year ago and now it's not working anymore. Well, YouTube is very much an organic platform and it changes over time, especially with new creators. So you do have to appreciate that whether it's through a topic or whether there's just more competition or better competition, you have to understand the, the I guess, the tectonic plates that are shifting underneath the ground that you create. on. Wow, what, that's another brilliant quote. Please, somebody clip that as well. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think there's anything necessarily dead or wrong with the channel, Floppy Penguin. I think it's just maybe creator strategy fatigue, perhaps. Or you just need to just reboot your your own strategy mindset a little bit yes let's see here thanks dan yes <laughs> well i i had already gone on and on uh i've seen this question pop up a few times i don't want to get too negative here but i'm going to bring it up because it might be an interesting topic oh i did want to bring yeah I, I i lost that one this is i wanted to stack this one up uh, oh anyway. okay well 
So can I get kicked from the YouTube partnership program if I start uploading videos with copyright claims? If yes, how many? It, well, let's just start with this. I just okay. want to start with this one and then go ahead. My question back to you is, why are you asking this question? Yep. Is it your intent to start using copyrighted content? And if so, why? Dan, continue. That's what I was going to say. We we don't want to encourage you to do that. Um, I don't know the answer to this because I've seen channels upload only copyrighted content and they're not partnered, but they're also not pulled. But then there, there are times where if you break the rules and you're caught, your channel could get pulled. I would, what, is it three strikes or could you just get pulled from your first video? I mean, three strikes, yeah. Three strikes? Yeah. I, I guess that's your answer, but don't. Like, don't do that, you know? Uh, <laughs> in in essence, there's nothing r technically wrong with getting a copyright claim because YouTube has built in uh, technology to allow the owner of that content to profit from your content. So yeah, if the content owner is more than happy for you to use the content and get a copyright claim, all right then. But you are starting to skirt towards the dangers of copyright strikes, and you're never quite sure where that the fence is between claims and strikes. But ultimately, you're going to start making money for somebody else uh, with these copyright claims. And it, it, it almost feels like this is reverse logic in that people are worried about if they'll get into the YouTube Partner Program, if they have copyright claims on their content. This person's got into the YouTube Partner Program, and now they want to use copyright claim content possibly to answer the question specifically youtube does state that uh, they have i think every right to remove you from the youtube partner program um i don't think it necessarily states because you're using copyright claim content but a lot of people fail to get into the youtube partner program in the being in the beginning uh through reuse content. And I know that's not technically the same thing, but it kind of feels like it when when I when I talk about it. So yeah, but ultimately it goes back to the question of why do you want to start using um copyright stuff? And now this is a question, is it? I'm asking because I plan to make montages, Fortnite and stuff. So uh, So you want to plan to make montages. Um, if you've not been doing that on your channel before, that's going to be quite a difficult uh, thing to break into because there are so many montage um, channels already. But I would use songs that have a claim and don't get shreds. Why would you not just use YouTube's audio library or ro or you know royalty free uh, music that you're you've paid a subscription to, so that then you can earn revenue from it or does it have to be very popular music to fit the montages i don't think it does i mean you might feel that way listening to it with popular music but i dare you to yeah, try there's, there's to royalty free alternatives isn't there? yeah try yeah. to find a similar song in the royalty free space similar genre uh, tempo and you may find that it works it, it may not be your dream video because you can't use that that hit song but it, you just don't want to go down that road. It, it's so difficult, especially what, like, what if we're, what if we're wrong too? And you do get your channel, not only pulled yeah. from the partnership program, but pulled from YouTube. I mean, all that work down the drain. So it, trust me, there are so many great services out there that are very affordable and you can get some fantastic royalty free music, uh, you know, for, for any video you can imagine. Uh, and also again, technically, generally speaking, you will need to get permission from the original creators of the Fortnite content to put in your montages. I know in practice that oh, very yeah. rarely happens, um, but if you want to be building a strong, trustworthy relationship with YouTube, uh, and I guess the creators that you're maybe using their content from, it's, it's, so let me. So it's kind of worked like this. This is a. I, again, I'm, I'm making this sound a bit ridiculous, but you're going to use somebody else's content and so that you, I guess, technically will be profiting from that content. But then you're going to use 
copyright claim music so that any profit you may or any revenue you would make from those videos, you're passing on to the content owners of the music. So you're turning into a middleman for Fortnite content to music content. I'm getting this completely mixed up, but you see where I'm going with this. It, it, none of this kind of makes sense from a uh, original creator wanting to build their channel and a community around their content. They're saying there'd be montages from their clips. Uh, I don't want to spend too oh, much the, time. All right, from their clips. All right, that's yeah. fair enough then. No um, problem with that. I do want to move on to the next question, but hopefully hopefully you got something out of that. Uh, we're just very skeptical about, you know, when it comes to using copyrighted stuff. Uh, best practice is to not. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay, I've seen this question pop a couple times. Can somebody grow through gaming showcases? If not, then game challenge videos. How do I look into them? Someone could grow from either. Uh, you know, I, I for how to look into them, find creators who are doing just that and and see, you know, the, what what makes them tick. If you're going to do showcases, for example, I would make your channel about a specific genre of game and showcase ones only within that genre. That gives you the best chance of getting returning viewers, and that's what you want. Um, for challenges, that would be a different thing. I would say you'd want to focus on one game if you're a challenge channel. Maybe I'm wrong, but I if if you're somebody who's really great at a particular game and you're always mastering these awesome challenges or hilariously failing at them, I may subscribe because I like this game and I like this person and their tomfoolery within these this challenge space. Uh, you could use the competitor tool from vidIQ to add those um channels to the list and then follow them on a regular basis so you have your subscriber list on youtube for entertainment purposes and your competitor list for creator business strategy purposes all right last question dan and then i want to do something else so oh, okay let's, let's <laughs> on tomorrow's video do you discuss the weird pause when a video ends on the short shelf it makes it hard to lose yes we i specifically focus on that jake fellman gives you the answer to that so there watch, you go. Watch the video. <laughs> or try and find it in our playlist now if you really want to get ahead of a game. <laughs> there you go. All right. All I've right. got some good news, Dan. After we kind of insulted our audience a little bit for not using uh, the <laughs> vidIQ milestones sharing certificate thing, we've got a few more submissions. So I'm going to say congratulations to Nerd Logic, who on the 1st of May hit 50,000 views. Congratulations to you on a magnificent achievement. I, In fact, this is interesting. I'm pretty sure that I have a gift for that. <laughs> what about these? I've, all I've these, been using um, them. Yeah, uh, is, yeah, there we are. There we go. So look, I'm replying to you with a gift. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> awesome. Next get, one then. Get Dan. replied on. <laughs> Uh, what do we what do we have here? Twenty thousand views from is that Kareem on May first? Nice. Well, it just well done to you. Twenty thousand views. Eh? Uh, we've got a SK One DZ Learning Channel with thirty thousand views achieved uh, back in April. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is where I. Whenever somebody puts numbers in words, I, I'm not of that generation where I can translate numbers into words so well done <laughs> sk1dz learning channel <laughs> 30 000 views uh, oh they've got another one here dan you can shout out this one 100 subscribers nice congratulations on may the second that just uh, happened uh indian uh, munchies i think has published a couple of certificates here Three hundred thousand views uh, nice. at the back end of april uh, 8,000 likes a little further on in April. And finally, 100 uploads. So you've done your first 100. You should have a lot of data. And now what I want you to do, oh, Malayam, Malayam Munchies, I want you to look back at your first video and see and, and just tell us what you think that video is like. Do you think it's a good video? Do you think that video sucked? And then you look at your latest video and think, yeah, just look at all of the improvements I've made over time. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to uh, early quantity leads to future quality. All right, Dan, who's who, who we got here? Uh, two peas in a pod has a thousand subscribers as of February 28th. So congratulations nice. to you. Great nice. way to start the new year. 
Yeah, that is uh, one requirement for monetization right there. And I think I've got one for that. Yes, there it is. Nicely done. Uh, am I going to have to redo all of these gifts when I shave off my beard? I think I am. You're going to shave off your beard? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I may do it at some point. <laughs> but not, not for a little while. Oh, we've got some more from two peas in a pod. Uh, oh, no, we have already done that one. And then we have here King Gamer. We've also a 1,000 subscribers. Oh, now I've set a precedence now, but I've got to do this for everybody. This is going to take a while. <laughs> this is going to take a while. Uh, IQ certs and get a thousand so yeah by the way anyone can use these um tweet these um gifs you just search for vid iq gifs or vid iq cert this is so that i could i knew exactly where the tags were so no one else would steal them uh, although if you make now some gifs called vid iq cert that would really annoy me uh, so at least somebody's going to do it uh, so yeah congratulations to you king gamer 314 and then dan we have next 900 subscribers from somebody oh it's generating a certificate there we go jerry jerry papandrea papandrea yeah i'll go along with that as well and uh short reviews did we do this one i don't think where do we ah so we've only got a couple more here short reviews with twenty thousand likes there on march the 7th congratulations to you and last but certainly not least because you're all equal dan we have uh loosters 70,000 views there we go congratulations that's fun to say all of you loosters yeah that's the channel name you'll remember i like that one all right we've still got time for some questions hey some questions. i just want to make sure to say thank you to those who did go to the vidiq certificate tool and actually published them since we only had two to begin with but we had at least 10 there so thank you very much All right, looking for questions, looking for questions. All right. We have talked to this channel in the past. I'm going to bring them up now and yep. see what you have to say. It's excellent, dude. Now, that's a channel name I love. Channel's very specific, solves very specific problems, so people get their solutions and they move on. Any suggestions on how to build up the subscriber count for a transient audience? Yeah, this is a, a tricky one, especially for a utility slash education channel. Uh, there is one creator who in this area defies the normal YouTube logic in the sense that you can do a tutorial on a particular program, but then you can't really transition to something else. I just need to try and find them in the background, uh, Dan, if you want to offer anything here. Oh, what are they called? What are they called? Yeah, this excellent dude's been around for a while. It's always it's always kind of tough because all their content is search driven content, and they'll they'll be the first person I ever think of if I want to solve a problem in Excel. Uh, this channel, right, uh, called uh, Kevin uh, Stravt I'm going to go with. Uh, he's a uh, one of these channels that just does really valuable tutorials, but he just goes all over the place like grow a youtube channel google drive tricks sharepoint camtasia outlook i mean these are all pieces of software but they're not really directly connected and yet he's built his channel up to half a million subscribers and each video gets in the region of at a starting point ten thousand views and i think that helps propel him to the top of the search rankings for whatever topic he's covering and then he just embeds himself there as evergreen content I just, I'm fascinated, but also kind of a little envious of this channel and how they do that, how they're able to just jump to whatever topic. So my guess, it, the answer to this is that the the content is so valuable in each of these videos, the way the creator presents it, that he has really high watch time in these education spaces. So excellent dude, if you want to just research this channel, maybe, do they have any Excel stuff? Let's have a look. Maybe oh, was... look at his Excel stuff as a starting point. Oh, there you yeah, go. so there is so there is quite a few things there. Look at what he's doing within Excel, and then see maybe how he's branched out from that topic. I was going to say too, maybe you could look at how this person started. Like, were they always covering everything, or did yeah. they have like a specific? Good question. Oh, so they like were a travel vlog. 
Yeah, they were doing something totally different. Yeah. And then then he got into how-tos. And then it was three years ago that he started to do how-to stuff. There's this first Excel one there with 90,000 views. So, yeah, this is an example of a where... You know, we talk about niching down, being really specific, but there are always exceptions to the rule, and this channel seems to be one that's, that's successfully done that. Their so latest I video. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't. Sorry, what was that? Their latest video. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should watch it and find out how he's done it. So he said, everybody should, can everybody, after this live stream, read this video and tell them <laughs> vidIQ sent you. Because we were something like vidIQ sent us this video because they want to know how on earth you built a utility channel by covering loads of different topics on on your videos because it, it shouldn't work like that but you have congratulations yeah be nice to them of course but yeah read this video if you can because we're just one, about done here now one we? message per person please <laughs> yeah all right we're just about done and then I see question 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 <laughs> uh let's with um here very we, we've i think i've answered this a, a few times today but i'll just be very direct here i have a gaming minecraft channel any tips for how to grow well two things so we have videos on how to grow a gaming channel if you have a minecraft channel niche down and then niche down again that's my advice for a minecraft channel minecraft yeah, imagine is... you're actually playing minecraft and you're digging down and you keep going down and you, you get to like a the most valuable bit of minecraft material and i don't know what it's called because i don't play the game but that's the thing that you're going to share on youtube yep you you want to be look at look at block facts look at block facts channel yeah. they literally make a one type of minecraft video it is i said it was gonna be direct and here we go off on a tangent Already, um, Completely indirect and in uh, yeah. I, I always, I always short circuit when there's questions like this because there's like so many ways to like go down these different rabbit holes. But they make channels where they just give facts about blocks in every video. Every video is about one block. If they're shorts, they're like I think the same exact length. Or they're all like 24 seconds long, I think, or something like that. Yeah, something like that. And you know that's how niche they've gone with Minecraft. I only do this one thing about this one game. If you can find whatever that is for you. I think you can find some success provided people are interested in, in that. The there end. The end. Uh, is it true that inactivity is not necessarily the key to success in this in, a, ah, in the sense, can a channel grow even if it only has a few videos a week or a month? I very often make one video a week. Yeah. And the short answer is yes, a channel can grow. I, I would say consistency is the biggest thing. What do you think? General cons- consensus continues to be, uh, this is for all channels, all creators, uh, try to make at least one video a week. In some cases, ideally one video a day. Um, I think when you've established your channel and you have a, a community that's really hungry for your content, then you can start to spread out your content a little bit more, as many creators have done. Um, but I, again, I think it goes back to that idea early on of a, just a little bit more quantity, testing different video ideas, testing new audiences, finding your place on YouTube uh, can be very helpful. I, mean, I, th- I think once you're into a pattern and a routine, then yeah, you can you can start to take a little bit longer making your content. And again, it depends on you and your audience. Um, I know anime, some animation channels are able to make content that's spread out between months, but they they have, a, I guess, a license and permission to do that because they've built an audience over a long period of time uh, to let them do that. Oh, just yawn. Excuse me. Uh, so uh, you, can, you can grab another question if you want. I was going to say that on Wednesday... Next Wednesday, we have Emily D. Baker here. So if you have any questions, we talked a little bit about copyright today, for example. We'll probably get into that a lot more. Jeez, yawning, man. We'll probably get into that a lot more uh, next Wednesday. She is a legal expert, and she will answer all of your legal questions. So get those ready for sure. And this uh, is going to be the full two hours, right, Dan, next week? We're yes. So we're not, yeah. yeah, that's a good question. We're not doing a product tour like we've been doing 
you know, every so often. This was a every, season finale every... of, of product tours. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we'll be doing our, our season break and then we'll get back from the product tours the following week. But so we're going to leave on a cliffhanger with me. I'm about to hit Dan's head with a stapler like Willy survive. Oh, 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 wait a minute. No, uh, you got to come over side. Where are you going? <laughs> come back. I don't want to be with a stapler. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> the stupid things I think of, eh? I think well, uh, maybe let's... maybe I've given him some poison, and that's why his eyes are all watering right now. And he's... I, if I he... yawn, that's it. I look like just I... gonna end with him going. <laughs> if if I yawn, it looks like someone someone just told me that uh, my channel lost a thousand subscribers. <laughs> uh, we've been at it for two hours, so I think I'm gonna call it here. Yeah, it's getting a bit crazy, isn't it? Yeah, we're getting, we're getting too punchy. So uh, let's thank some people for for coming out today. What, who do you want to thank? I'm going to thank um, Ashy's Food Court for saying hi, everyone. Unfortunately, uh, you are coming to the end of the live stream, but if you just get that slider and roll it back two hours, you can enjoy us uh, for a lots of Q&A and a product tour. I'm going to say thank you, as always, to Zenzeris, who, once again, I just noticed he did all of the uh, timestamps for the channel audits yesterday. Incredible sterling work, as always. Android Wise TV. Uh, Lord, are you plays Tech Echo, Sky Riot plays, and Road Rush Nation? I will say goodbye to Tech Echo, Sky Riot plays. I think I'm seeing the same names you did. Tanner Animation, Koi Fish Gaming, Pokey Art, Game Boy Lyric, uh, Excellent Dudes and Zeris, and Dragonic X. Thank you all for hanging out with us. We hope to see you next week for uh, not only channel audits on Tuesdays, but emily's uh, q a <laughs> it's gonna be awesome we're also look for a community post on our channel i think about the day before uh and if you have any questions for emily leading up to that live stream we're gonna do a special segment where we take those questions as well as the questions from here in chat so there you go cool Peace, everyone bye everybody have a great rest of your day and we'll see you later as i look for the thing okay see ya <laughs>